Good evening and welcome to News Channel 8. I'm Jerome Aguian and these are some of the top stories we have for you tonight. Home Depot's grand opening draws hundreds of cruisians. The wait is over. Dish Network and Channel 8 merge just for you. And soccer, soccer, soccer for the youth. These stories and more are up next on News Channel 8. <laughs> Top story tonight, you could not fit an ant in the parking lot of Home Depot last night. The grand opening was a fantastic success as Governor John DeYoung demonstrates his construction skills. Let's take a look. I ask the question in terms of, I say, Miss Anne-Marie, how is the supplies? I say you have enough supplies because this is the first time in history that when you open a Home Depot, you know that phrase we always hear, there's a back order. So she assured me she has supplies for everyone here tonight. But on and all, I want to say uh, this is good. And again, with, uh, we had an issue with the public-private partnership investment, and it's good. I walked through the store several times. They, at one time, they thought I was an employee. But when I look at the faces of the folks that they hired, it's our people. Almost 18 months ago, and I promise you I won't be long, over 18 months ago, we stood on over there and we put shovels in the ground to see what could come out several months later. And with Melissa, Chuck, Anne Marie, and Hector, we have today the only Home Depot that's been opened up in the United States in the last 12 months is on the island of St. Croix. When you get discouraged about a lot of things, keep one thing in mind. Home Depot is the largest retailer in the world, one of the largest. And in 12 months, the only U.S. store is on an 84 by square mile island in the Caribbean, in the Virgin Islands called St. Croix. You ought to be extremely proud of that. And this effort is due to a lot of things, but Home Depot being here, I think will make our community a lot stronger, will attract a lot more people. here on St. Croix as well. And in other news tonight, a new suspect has graduated to the Virgin Islands most wanted list. Here's Melody Rains with more. The Virgin Islands Police Department District of St. Thomas has placed Willis W. Penny II on the territory's most wanted list. Penny is wanted in connection with an assault third degree, which occurred on Saturday, January 29th in the area of Fort Milner. The Virgin Islands Police Department is requesting the community's assistance in locating this suspect. Penny is 28 years old, a native of St. Thomas, and lives in a state Anna's retreat. He is 5 foot 6 inches tall, has a dark complexion, and short natural hair. 
St. Thomas St. John Police Chief Rodney F. Carrad Sr. reminds the public that all wanted suspects should be considered dangerous. The public is advised not to approach the suspect, but to call 911 immediately. Anyone having any information on the whereabouts of Willis W. Pinney II, please call Chief Carrad at 715-5548. The Criminal Investigation Bureau detectives at 714-9806. 714-9844, or you can call Crime Stoppers USVI at 1-800-222-TIPS. Thanks, Melody Rames of the Virgin Islands Police Department. And when we come back from this break, the wait is over. Dish Network is here to save you a lot of money. Stay with us. And let's take a look at your Caribbean report for tonight. In your Caribbean report tonight, we start in Road Town Tortolo, where the Royal Virgin Islands Police Force in a press release said they are following several leads into yesterday afternoon's robbery attempt at the Omar Hodge building at Wickham's K. News reached the press that two armed men entered the Medicare LTD main office in Omar Hodge building in Wickham's K at around 1 p.m. yesterday afternoon and held persons at gunpoint but left empty handed. Information is still sketchy, but news agencies were told that the two men who were masked entered the office just after 1 p.m. and demanded money. After finding there was no money, the men reportedly left with no injuries during the ordeal. And turning to St. Vincent and the Grenadines, where politicians react and have come forward in the recent homicides in Camden Park. Nigel Stevenson, parliamentary representative for the South Leeward area, said that he knew of all the parties involved and that the killings may have been the result of the impending dissolution of Franklin's marriage. From what he gathered, he knew that the family had domestic problems and that they were actually going to court in the next few days to finalize the divorce. They never made it to that court hearing. And Deputy House Speaker David Brown also spoke of the killings in Camden Park. I'm seeing a lot of things that are popping up in the South Leeward area. If you check within the last three or four years, plenty of domestic violence has occurred there. Noting that in his budget presentation last year, he proposed a mentor program. Acting Prime Minister Garland Miguel also stated on Tuesday that the Camden Park killings were a brutal murder. Meanwhile, in an unrelated incident in St. Vincent and the Grenadines on Tuesday, news broke of residents and redemption sharks in central Kingstown had discovered in a septic tank the body of one Anthony Nero, who had been missing for about a month. His body, which was in an advanced stage of decomposition, was encased in concrete at the bottom of the septic tank. St. Clair Laycock, member of the Parliament of Central Kingstown, said on Tuesday that police had to use power tools to remove the body from the septic system. And finally, in Port of Spain, Trinidad, Prime Minister Kamla Prasad Bazassar has announced 11 new areas in Trinidad and Tobago, as well as a maritime boundary, as being under the curfew hours of 11 p.m. to 4 a.m. effective Wednesday. She made the announcement following a marathon seven-hour-long meeting of the National Security Council. The Prime Minister said to also be subjugated to curfew will be those areas around the perimeter of the island, 362 kilometers of Trinidad and Tobago's coastline, and will extend outward three nautical miles. The areas initially announced to be under curfew since the start of the state of emergency on August 21st are remaining under curfew. And that's your Caribbean report for tonight. Well, the wait is over. Now you no longer have to pay high prices for just a few channels. News Channel 8's West Small files this report on the merge between Channel 8 and Dish Network. Thanks a lot, Jerome. We are in Barron Spot. That's right. I told you Barron Spot Village Mall is really growing. Besides Channel 8 here, Poppy Love with the 90, the 90.1 90 radio station up there, and also Dish Network is here. I want to welcome our, our partners here. We have Randy Cravey and also my man Juan. I'm not even going to try his last name. I Nanovich. There you go. And he's the chief guy here. But first, we're going to hear from you, Randy. I have to tell you, this is a long time coming. <laughs> Folks, we've been hearing this for a while. That comp the competitor charging you just oodles of money for hardly, I don't know, just a few stations. Guess what? Safway. It's all over. You don't have to worry about that anymore. Dish is finally here. And the good news is, yes, moi. You're going to be able to see West the Best and News Channel 8 on Dish Network in just a few days, and then we're going to blow it off the top. Randy, 
Tell me this is no fantasy. Tell me that I'm not dreaming. For 1999, we could get started? That's correct. 1999, and we've got, that would include 120 channels. And with certain, uh, we've got high def channels. We've, we've definitely got the most high def channels in St. Croix. And, uh, but we've, we, we've got a, a wonderful package, an absolutely wonderful package for you. And not only do we offer the programming, the, the best high def channels, we offer you the great best service also. We, we take a lot of pride in the service that we provide. Wonderful. And so what you can assure, get out of us is professional installation and good quality service after you become our customer. Look how compact this is. Remember all the rumors and the melee about, oh, I can't get a dish, it'll topple over the house and all that. Look at this. Now, Juan is a pretty big guy, but Juan, you know more about the technical thing. These things are light. You know, they almost need no service. You guys are all over this, and you just service everything you sell. Tell them all about it. I know you're going to give us a little something in Spanish, too, my man Juan. <laughs> Uh, hi to all you. Hola, como están? This is the new setup of the antenna we're using, the one that Wes is talking about. With this antenna, the, there's no need no more to use the six footers, the four footers. This is a, only a 30 inch antenna. This is set up at your house and, and it will last for the winds of the hurricanes because it, it, can, it can be held on to 85 miles per hour. So you don't have to be the need of going down and going up. You know, you can leave it up for maybe like Maria or Maria. And then you can leave it up. And like my... So what my, you're saying, Juan, that this is sturdy enough to stand the disaster, right? No, it just goes to <laughs> only one category, only one category. Now, let's check out the box information and how easy it is once you come in here tomorrow morning. Okay, boys. Uh, this box is a dual tunnel model. With this dual tunnel model, the customer can actually watch two TVs with only one receiver. So he won't be paying any more for the second TV. It will be free. Like the competition does. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. Si, como no. Okay, well, we also have the DVR options. With this DVR, the customer can actually get um, record whatever they want. Watch it whenever they want. If you didn't believe me, maybe you'll believe mommy and poppy here. Pop, how you doing? I'm okay. And you came in here because you want to watch. Uh, I want to watch Channel 8 at, at uh, Net Dish Network. <laughs> you know what? This is not planned. They did come in here, though, to just to get the dish, you know. Yeah. And this is just not about Channel 8. It's about anything that you'd like to watch on your 120 channels for, yes, as low as 1999. What made you come in here, Poppy? Well, I came here because I'm looking for a good service and, and, uh, and, and I know to see a good price. Yeah. Yeah. General Manager, Glenn <laughs> Drake, he stuck in. Yeah, yeah. I'd like to, hey, like to uh, welcome right. these guys and congratulate Thank Once again, you. I'm looking forward to working with you guys, man, and, and all the Thank best, you, and, and we, we got your back here. Yeah. And when you come into Baron Spot to this lovely place, you encounter this lovely lady named Dorna, and she's going to help you out. And Dorna, tell us the operating hours and everything like that. Hi, good evening, everyone. The operating hours is um, from Monday to Saturday from 7 to 4 o'clock. We're located right underneath Barn Spot, um, right underneath News Channel 8. The telephone number is 642 1374 and like I said our operating hours is from Monday to Saturday 7 to 4. Okay well said Dorna let's put a wrap 1999 120 channels I don't have to say anything less thank you guys Dish Network Baron Spot Mall I'm Wes Small for News Channel 8. Thanks Wes and yes we're all very excited about merging with Dish Network and now it's time to get your pens and papers out for the lottery drawing numbers for tonight. Tonight's lottery drawing, the first winning lottery drawing number is 7344 for $175,000. Second place prize, the winning lottery drawing for tonight is 31562 for $65,000. Third place prize, the winning lottery number drawing for tonight is 331 two nine for forty thousand dollars and fourth place prize the winning lottery number tonight for thirty thousand dollars is five four five six and in last place in fifth place tonight the winning lottery drawing number is one two nine one seven for twenty thousand dollars
And that's your winning lottery drawing numbers for tonight. We hope you had a winner out there. The next drawing will be September 29th, 2011. When we come back from this break, we've got soccer for you. Stay with us. This weekend, Vialco will be the place for your children and the great sport of soccer. Here's Wes Small. Soccer, soccer, soccer. Goal! All right. I'm here with uh, Tim Williams and Brian Blaska. And once again, we want to thank Renaissance and the use of their facility here at Vialco. Boy, this place brings back memories. We're talking about ISO. AYSO, American Youth Soccer Organization. And we're going to have hundreds of your children out here kicking that spotted ball around. It's nothing but a win win situation. Uh, Tim, thank you very much. You got the coach, Coach Brian, here. I want to introduce you as the regional commissioner for um, American Youth Soccer Organization. And I have to tell you, man, it's a, it's a big growing sport and it's just taken off. And I bet you're going to get a tremendous response. Well, uh, we hope so, Wes. Again, as you know, uh, soccer. Uh, world's most popular sport uh, by far and uh, it's obviously uh, caught on uh, very uh, very large here in St. Croix. We're going into almost 15 years now with, wow. a, with AYSO and uh, again I'd like to thank you and TV8 for giving us this opportunity to get the word out to the parents and the children because yep. that's what it's about. Yes. It's about the kids and um, this Saturday right here where we're standing uh, 9 o'clock uh, we're going to start uh, start the season off with registration and skills assessments, so we can get uh, teams formed and uh, and hopefully within a couple weeks after that uh, get the games underway. What should uh, Brian? What should the parents be dropping off their kids with, or the the the, the athletes should be coming with? Uh, shin pads, cleats. Uh, we have balls. We have we do have shin pads for people if they don't have them. Uh, basically, just show up, and if you don't have something, we will get it for you. Yeah. Um, other than that, I'm in charge of player development and in charge of the select teams. Uh, AYSO has started a flex program, basically to compete with clubs back in the States. We've been very successful to this point. Uh, last January, the U-12 team won the Florida State Championship. Yes, sir. And this past July, the U-16 team took second in two tournaments in Minnesota. Represent. Which, which are uh, the USA Cup is the largest tournament in the Western Hemisphere, 16,000 players from around the world. And so we have the players here, and my job is to develop them more and more uh, for the kids that want to go on to college or uh, any level above that. Um, you know, the, the group that's going to be out here Saturday, there's going to be 300 kids, all levels. Uh, from that, we will talk to the kids. Anybody that wants to go on, wants to take it to the next level is welcome, um, and we we'll go from there. That's, that's really exciting then. Who's funding all this? Well, Wes, uh, we, we do get a lot of private donations. There's a lot of uh, fantastic uh, individuals on island and off. Uh, money does come in from stateside. But uh, the majority of this program, and again, uh, I would like to reiterate that uh, AYSO is 100% volunteer. I, get, I do not get paid. Coach Brian does not get paid for this. Every, uh, and it's typically made up of parents. Parents are our referees, are our coaches, um, our safety directors, um, our board of uh, our board of directors. So, uh, um, and from that, uh, the fee this year is going to is one hundred dollars. But what that includes in your one hundred dollars is twenty five weeks of soccer every Saturday. You also players will receive a full uniform, which includes jersey, shorts, uh, socks, shin guards, and uh, again. And we would we do want parents to know that uh, we know there's uh, tough financial times out there, and there's just some. Uh, money's tight with some families, but we want you to bring your child out here. You need to come see us at the table, and if you can't afford the, the full 100, we will work with you. And if there are children uh, that uh, can't afford uh, anything, then we will find a scholarship for them so they can be on this field. Um, I normally don't do this, but uh, we, we're really recruiting. I'm going to give out my personal cell phone. I already had calls this morning, believe it or not. I couldn't even get out of the radio station, and the phone was ringing. Um, I can be reached here on St. Croix at 244-7390. That's 244-7390. Or we urge you, the best place to go is to www.ayso.org. O -R -G. And from the national website, you'll be able to get to St. Croix. Tim and Brian, wings waiting for them in heaven. That makes a big difference in this community. We'll see you here Saturday. Go soccer, soccer, soccer. Bring your shin pads. You know what that's about. All right. I'm Wes Small. Thanks a lot, guys, for News Channel 8.